a grip shapes the light and they bring us sandbags and they put them on the light. Grip is somebody who, well, they shape the light, they carry sandbags, they just lug around a lot of heavy stuff. What is a grip? A grip helps diffuse the light that the electricians provide to make a movie. Grip makes my photos look good. Uh, grip is camera and lighting support. So we do uh, work for camera, for uh, rigging to vehicles, uh, any process trailer work, we do that as well. You know, we do everything, the handling the camera on dollies. And then we also do lighting. So we cut light, we shape light. Today I'm wafting smoke. One of the jobs of the grip, I use this board to wave around the smoke and it helps it look better for the camera. First unit, you'll have your, your key which is the guy that is talking to the DP, which is your boss. Um, There's a lot of new people who get into the film business and maybe it's their first job and they don't really have any other skills. Being a grip requires you know, lighting, camera support, reading. There's a lot of stuff involved and usually people come from some other background where they have uh, mechanical skills, carpenter skills, things like that. Anything like that, you can bring the table's a big advantage because you can learn the lighting stuff on the job, but having some mechanical skills already is a huge advantage. Your boss will be talking to the DP, seeing what kind of lighting they want to do. The best boy is like the key grips assistant, essentially, um, but he is doing all your time cards, your ordering techno cranes. Uh, this is what it looks like when we're bringing gear in or we're bringing gear out, counting it out, doing the inventory. It's all the grip gear we use this show. So this truss, sometimes we use it for fly swatters. It could be for diffusing light outside uh, or hanging lights. Uh, we'll use it on stage to hang lights from and sometimes set pieces. And then we got all the track and apple boxes. C stands, combo stand, straight track, curve track. Anything that makes the day go smooth, um, that's basically what the best boy is trying to do. He's trying to make the key grips life a lot easier, keep the headaches away from them. So basically he's in all the production meetings, all the behind the scenes stuff. Thirds, which is a grip, but you are the third person in line, either a hammer or whatever. You're the one that's actually doing whatever the key grip asks for. You're going in and you're setting flags. You're shaping light, essentially, when you're on the first unit. Uh, how long have I been gripping? Well, seven years. It takes a while to kind of get over the hump and figure it all out. But um, it's starting to come together. I love building things with my hands and, and uh, and as a kid, I like Legos, and I think I think it, I just think it translates pretty well to that. Like it's a real adult version of it. But I, I got to get this stuff into set. So uh... I've been gripping for about four years now. My first show was Ant Man and the Wasp. I was a rigging grip on that. Forty-four years. First show I worked on was Summer of My German Soldier, 1978. I was PA. My first boss in the film business was a uh, Coors Extra Gold guy. He had one line in Smoking the Bandit. Took me under his wing and taught me a bunch of stuff. And when I told him I wanted to go freelance, he said it sounds like a perfect opportunity. So I did that. I worked for a small production company for two or three years, and we did commercials and stuff. And they hired freelancers, and I saw what everybody did, and I thought, well, the grip department, that's where I want to be. And then the dolly grips, can't forget, forget about those guys. They're the ones that roll around the big dollies and they're the ones who make every, and, and they do the techno crane as well. They, they basically lay the track, they do the techno, giraffe crane, whatever. They, they do pretty much 
um, anything that has to do with moving the camera around. So those guys are really skilled at their job. It's hard to explain. Uh, it's, a, it's a collaboration. Uh, a lot of times I know what he wants before they, or she wants before they ask for it. it it's just knowing what his vision is, and he's interpreting the vision of the DP or the director. The dolly goes up and needs to go upstairs and try to always use a peewee, which didn't even come into existence until the mid 80s. Um, I remember taking a fisher up a three turn stairway where we had this fisher nine, which that nobody uses anymore. We had to stand it vertically to get it up the stairs. Fisher nine is about three feet longer than this dolly. Wow. Yeah, it was a nightmare. <laughs> taking dollies upstairs has to be done sometimes. Uh, we, you always, the dollies can handle the rain, but we always cover the camera as much as possible. It's, it's where you start and stop on a move, uh, and you have them both for the arm and for the uh, chassis. I usually work off the rear wheel, center of the rear wheel on the uh, chassis. It's where you, the camera works both vertically and horizontally uh, to get where you want to go. Conventional, which is only the rear wheel, those steers rather, the crab, which all four wheels steer in one direction or the other. And then the new mode, which is rounding, it's only been around 10 years. Uh, it means you can go in a circle. One wheel, one front wheels turn one way, the rear wheels turn the other way. Frames, air compressor, ladders, various 4 by 8 stuff, foam core, plywood. These are rags, diffusion, solid, grids, more rags, more rags, stands right here. And then we got milk crates full of hardware, cheese burls. This is our family of what we call apple boxes. We start here with the pancake. Then we go to a quarter. It's a half. And then a full apple box. Mostly used. Uh, yeah, just like that. From there we have different types of C-stands. We have our short C-stand. We have your full-size C-stand with the 40-inch arm. You have your combo stands. Combo stands are used mostly outdoors or with large frames indoors. They always keep things to your right hand side. This is called a Rocky Mountain leg. So if, say we weren't on level ground, we could lean it in and that would make the, that would make the stand upright. So when you set a flag, you make sure your knuckles on your right two sides to a gel frame. You got your side that looks kind of ugly. Then you have a show side, which is nicely taped off. So you keep your flag's knuckles to the right so that if it's tilted forward, it tightens and doesn't loosen up towards talent. Sometimes when you're gripping, you gotta move plywood. Full size C stands are used quite often with different size flags. You have your 18 by 24, you have your two by threes, you have your two by fours, you have two by sixes. Lots of different kinds of flags with diffusion, nets, ultra bounces, different whatever you're gonna need. You'll have them in different sizes to, according to the size of the location you're gonna use them. So an example would be a four by four, floppy. Make sure all your knuckles are tight. Again, the right hand rule, if it's tilted forward so it doesn't undo any. 
you flop it first because you won't be able to reach it where you're going. So that makes your a four by four, a four by eight. First, you go up on your arm, and then you go up on each riser. And it gives you approximately 19 feet of reach for your four by to block a, a street light or some sort of light that's inside the building that you're trying to block. All right, so when a smaller flag won't work or a larger frame won't work, we have eight by frames we can build out of one inch square stock. We put corners and ears on them, use a combo or use a high roller or even a mambo, which is a, a larger stand that reaches 27 feet tall. And you put different diffusion rags, what they call them. You got your half grids, you got your solids. This one's a 12 by 12 solid. So it completely blocks the light. So you're trying to hide something behind it, a truck parked behind it, a gear behind it, or just a bunch of random lights that are gonna be shining that you don't need on your side of the set. And you also have this eight by here, which is a quarter grid, which is just a smaller weave of diffusion for changing how much light and how soft it looks inside the set. When you're done with your four by frames, you wanna put them back in what is called a four by cart, pretty self-explanatory. Most people have them, you have your solids on one side, have your singles, your doubles. You have them protected because they're real fine, almost a hosiery type material that tears really easily. See, when you put your flags away, you want to make sure that you don't hit the pins into the gels or it'll tear. And on top of your four by cart, you normally carry whatever rags you're going to use on a regular basis, your 12 buys, your eight buys, things you're going to use real quick on set. Sometimes when you're gripping, you got to set up Christmas lights. Sometimes grips need to do a little carpentry work. So say you were on at stair steps or something uneven, the same as the Rocky Mountain leg on a combo stand, you're going to have an adjustable leg on a C-stand. So then it's still straight up and down. Same thing, right hand side. And then there's, you know, set in a net and set it break it over the top of somebody and this is where the right hand rule comes into play because now the weight's pushing forward it's also tightening itself so that it can't lo loosen up if you were showing you a combo stand set up well if i'm trying to set a blade give it a little tilt up so that the weight of it will tighten it back down and you can set your blade to any direction you want. Then if you need to flop it, you can spin it this way so you'd have your four by flop. If you need to go over the top of something and have your flop, you can do something like that. Raise it up and over somebody and you know, bring it in. Okay. So that way you can get your light off of somebody the right way. department we are uh, with the air balloon today otherwise there's a grip cloud it's uh for the helium and it'll go up there's a little sandbag from it the sandbag's going on it it would go up a mile and a half in the air right that's right a mile and a half in the air Safety is one of the biggest things you got to think about on set because 
there's a lot of things happening really fast and, and a lot of people working at the same time they're all on top of each other and sometimes you know you get going too fast and bad things happen or somebody gets hurt maintaining a safe set being aware of things around you you know looking overhead so safety is number one thing this other one is baby head arm safety frame Also with GRIPS 2, they basically are the help to every other department. Uh, camera, electric, sometimes set deck. All the vehicles we use at work, it's important to learn how to drive a forklift, a condor, any opportunity to, to operate a vehicle, you need to take the class, learn how to do that, learn how to do it safely, that's a big deal. Look, listen, learn, soak it in, take in as much information as you can. You know, don't come into a new environment thinking you already know everything because you don't. A little tip as a grip. When you're done, clean your lift. If you don't know something, ask. Be there, be attentive. Keep your head on a swivel. Uh, radio etiquette is a, is a big thing. So, yeah, that's what grips do. Oh, hey, I meant to tell you earlier when I was talking about mambos, this is a Mambo. It's a really big stand for used outdoors, 27 foot tall and all that. You have to tie a knot without letting go of either end. Sometimes when you're gripping, you gotta grip. Bye.